Thanks, Peter. And uh, yeah, thank you for uh, giving me the chance to uh, <coughs> speak to you this afternoon. Um, I just wanted to uh, introduce myself to you, those of you who don't know who I am. Uh, my name is uh, Adam Ledbetter, and I'm uh, at the Marine Institute in Ireland, on the west coast of Ireland, where uh, I lead the data management team. Uh, and before I joined the Marine Institute, I worked at the British Oceanographic Data Centre for uh, about 10 years, where uh, um, some of the work that uh, I'm going to talk to you about today and some of the ideas around um, linking data and using um, some of the, the new web techniques for publishing data um, were worked on. Um, and then before that, my background was in uh, oceanography as a co coastal um, oceanographer. So um, I just thought I'd show sort of where we're going in the in the next hour or so. Um, in order really to help uh, help everybody understand um, kind of why the ideas of the semantic web and, and linked data are important for uh, research data management, um, and particularly in ocean sciences, I thought I'd just go through a little bit of the history um, of, of some of the ideas that have uh, come about through IODE and, and other organizations. Then um, we'll just go right back to the um, basics on the concepts that we're talking about with, with what the semantic web is, what linked data is. And then um, we'll have a look at um, why that might be useful, how you can run queries against the knowledge that's uh, stored on in the semantic web. And uh, then just very briefly show some different ways in which you can connect the catalogs that you work on uh, day to day um, and the data so sources that, that you're publishing to that uh, that resource on the web. And then um, I just wanted to introduce a couple of the ideas that, that we're looking at at the moment on how to apply the techniques that, that I'm going to show you and talk about um, in, into a more real-time system. Um, a lot of what, what I'm going to show you is done back in the office and it's done um, after data have been collected and, and now we're kind of researching and, and looking at how we might apply that to, to real-time data in the future. So um, just the first sort of few minutes, I, I want to go through um, a history of some of the, the, the models that we've used for looking after marine data, why that's um, why that's important and, and where they've come from. And um, you'll be able to kind of come back to the key resources um, in the current state of the art for, for doing this after. So um, a couple of my colleagues from the British Oceanographic Data Center have, uh, have written a, a chapter kind of detailing this that's going to come out in a, in a book on oceanographic data management um, early next year. Um, and kind of they described um, the way that knowledge uh, capture and, and, and um, data management has gone in, in oceanography from, from quills and free text to the digital age and to big data. And really, that's kind of encompassing all of what I'm, I'm going to talk about this afternoon. So um, we know that, that going out and collecting uh, data in the ocean is, is expensive and difficult and uh, every measurement that's made when we are out into the into the ocean is is unique and therefore really every measurement is is precious in some way so um you know from uh, from the beginning of the discovery report through to uh every cruise that goes on now and uh mapping um for for both underwater archaeology and for marine geophysics is very important. And uh, as we've sort of deployed new um, new platforms for collecting data in the marine environment, the knowledge is just growing more and more. So ROVs and uh, autonomous underwater vehicles and Argo floats. Um, all of these new data sources that are coming online are are making our job as research data managers more and more uh, complicated. 
and uh, and and as people want to access the data from the different platforms together, then uh, new ways of of connecting the data and new ways of understanding um, the context for for different sorts of data are really important. But um, you know, all of these these beautiful um, maps and uh, profiles and uh, biological records are really imp really uh, important because they've kind of informed how we how we manage data. So these have come from the discovery investigations, and uh, these these were started in 1925 and come up um, as far as 1980. They were uh, they were published in this form. And so the Indian Ocean stations that were the first um, picture there and the, the cross section through the ocean. Unfortunately, you know, that's not how we, how we present data anymore. Um, the, the general idea of the graphs are the same, but how, how, do we, we, how do we take that through into a more modern computer system? So even as the discovery reports were still being uh, published, in the 1970s, uh, advances in, in computing were pushing uh, data management in the oceans in new ways. And uh, if you go on to the IOD website, you can find this manual and guide number 17, and that that will show you kind of the the, the um, one of the first common formats for for um, describing data in the same ways and trying to capture information and knowledge in a in a way that was um, a way that was shareable between the, the different uh, data centers and, and data repositories that were involved at the time. And one of the keys in this uh, project in, in, in the 1970s and 1980s was having a common data format and a common data language. And in this particular uh, volume of the, uh, of the manual, then you can see, you would go in there and you could see that there are uh, code lists. So you could pick out um, if you were recording salinity, you would uh, label in your file PSAL and you would see that that was uh, salinity. But um, it was very difficult for people to uh, keep up to date um, because this was, this was before the web. And so there was a long and slow publication process. And... Uh, and eventually, these code lists moved on to uh, sites that people could download, but there was still a, a delay between needing to make edits and, and making personal copies. So then, um, then there was a, a, an, another format that uh, both IOD and ICES, the uh, International Council for the Exploration of the Seas, worked on. And they were pushing to the next level, uh, and they wanted to um, they recommended that those code lists that were in the tables should become part of uh, part of a web service, and uh, and uh, uh, formats like Marine XML came along, where they were trying to take those code lists that had been in the book form and then move them uh, so that they could be connected together in some ways. And this is really where we're getting into into. Um, into this linked data world that we're going to focus on, and so the code access to the code lists was improved through projects that happened at the British Oceanographic Data Centre. So enabling parameter discovery, and then later open service for marine environmental data. And you can now go and find those code lists online. So if you uh, if you go to this website. Um, http vocab.nerc.ac.uk, you will find a lot of the content of those uh, books that were published online, uh, on paper and then moved on to text files that you could download from the web is now available uh, in a format that we'll, we'll discuss uh, in, in a bit more detail. And, uh, and there's a, a journal paper that, that you can uh, read all about that system in. But just just as just before we go any further, it's just uh, a little aside I want I want to make. So I guess 
we're all in some way involved in in the marine sciences, marine research, mar marine research data management. And I guess a lot of us are infected by the, the magic of ocean sciences in, in all its various forms. And I believe one of the, one of the talks that um, you will have looked at during the week um, was uh, one of the, the TED talks, which was given by uh, John Delaney from the University of Washington. And w one of the particular reasons why I, I uh, asked for that, that talk to be included in the course material was that I love this quote about there being technologies and emergent fields around the ocean sciences, which if we look to them, we can add something to the, to the magic of the ocean sciences. And uh, really, for me, that captures kind of why we're looking to a lot of these computer science techniques uh, like semantic web and linked data to, um, to explore our data from the oceans in, in new ways. And, and for me, this, this quote really just kind of captures uh, what I want to say to you today and, uh, and why I do what I do on a day-to-day on a -day basis. 